Hey guys, 420 scene here. Hope everyone's having themselves a super stony day. Let me know what you're talking on and where you watch the video from. I always like to know. Be sure to drop a like, subscribe, and if you want access to all my secret unlisted grown smoke videos, check us out on Patreon. I'm gonna have the link in the upper right hand corner over here. So today we're gonna be doing yet another truth. Of, I make it sound like yet, like, like we did one last week. We haven't done one in two years actually, but we're gonna be doing another truth about Fox Farm video that I, I did a video video like this a couple years ago, like I said, but everything changes within time. So I kind of want to make an updated video explaining how Fox Farm has changed over the years and what I've noticed then and what I notice now. Also, before we move on with today's video, it seems like what is happening with some people is, and this is going to sound really bad and I hope it doesn't. All right, listen guys, let's just get through this intro. I got to say it though. I feel like People take what I say in a video, they listen to maybe a third, maybe like half of what I say, and then put their own spin on it and then head off over to Reddit, also known as the Congregation of Toxicity, and say how I don't know what I'm talking about, but I'm gonna clear things up yet again. I know I haven't called people out in quite a while, but this time I have to. I never said anything bad about worm castings or bat guano being in something like ocean forest. What I'm saying is that for seedlings, it's just too hot for them. And some people can get away with it and get lucky and think, oh, you know, they're not gonna be too hot for them until their luck finally runs out. And it's like, oh shit, wow. 420 scene does actually know what he's talking about. So I kind of just want to clarify, I have nothing but good things to say about worm castings and bat guano. Actually, come to think of it, I even made a video specifically about like the benefits of worm castings literally a few months ago saying how good of an amendment it really is. So I, I don't know. I don't know what people are talking about. So please, if you're gonna make comments, at least listen to everything I have to say and not just listen to half of what I have to say or like a third and then make assumptions on everything else. I've been doing this for 11 years. You know what I mean? Like, trust me, I know exactly what I'm talking about, whether people wanna believe it or not. Again, my apologies here. I hope this, I hope the comment section is not gonna be filled about the intro. So we're gonna get right onto today's video. So let's talk about the whole reason why we're here. Fox Farm. It's changed over the years. And I mean, I'm not just talking about one specific brand of soil, but like Ocean Forest has probably changed more than all the others from my experience. And I'm gonna break down all the different Fox Farm soils that I've used over the years and how I feel like you should be using it because all the Fox Farm soils, believe it or not, are different in their own right. So if I can show you guys the differences between all of them, I think you're gonna be, I think it's gonna be less confusing for beginners when you go to your local hydro shop. Since we're already talking about Ocean Forest, for us, that's gonna be the first soil I'm gonna be talking about. Plus, I feel like it's probably the most popular one that everybody seems to use. And I've used Ocean Forest since my very, I mean my very first run because of watching Cali Green. Shout out to you, my man. I love your Bean the Harvest videos, they're super dope. When I first started with Ocean Forest though, I feel like it didn't really have nearly as many amendments as it did like later on after 2012. I still remember you would just throw on Ocean Forest and then add another more Fox Farm, new, like from the Dirty Dozen, you know how concentrated that stuff is, and you still wouldn't get burned at all. I clearly remember that, especially in my very first run when I didn't know anything at that time. I'm, obviously it's your first run, what exactly do you know? You know, you're just kind of starting out and just kind of going through the mud of it all. But then I feel like Ocean Forest got a little bit more hot around, maybe like 2015, it seemed like they upped the ratio amounts of amendments. So then you couldn't really use it until you transplanted. And listen, some guys are gonna get lucky and be like, oh yeah, you can, you know, you're not gonna get burned at all. But then I read the comments and then there's gonna be that group of people that's like, man, I should have listened to you, bro. Oh, I got burned on them seedlings, bro. So like I was saying, like around 2015, I feel like they just upped the ratio amounts of amendments. So you couldn't really use it until you transplanted. And even then you would have to supplement with something with no amendments at all, you know, just to kind of ease up on the nutrients that were already in the ocean for us, something like maybe pro mix or happy frog. But as of lately, maybe like, 2021 to even like right now well i didn't use ocean forest on this run i used pro mixed with gaia green but like the last run being girl scout cookies that was you know towards the tail end of 2022. i do feel like ocean forest eased up a little bit on the ratio of amendments because the last run that i did like with the girl scout cookies not the apple betty i didn't get any nutrient burn which i would have back in 2015 but it does last if you're wondering how long it's gonna last for like the amendments that are in the soil, from my experience, it would be like five or six weeks, give or take. Now, the only problem that I'm seeing with Ocean Forest is a lack of potassium. So 
If you do go with Ocean Forest, oh, excuse me, guys. If you do go with Ocean Forest and you do get some kind of yellowing on the edges of your leaves, potassium deficiency, I mean, classic sign right there, just add in some wood ash. Believe it or not, wood ash does have potassium in it. Or something like Langbionite. I know down the earth has Langbionite NPK ratio 0, 0,022. I just. Don't ask me how I know some of these NPK ratios. I mean, I've just used it for such a long time. I just, just remember it. Ocean Forest, obviously, it's got worm castings, it's got bat guano and, you know, and don't get me wrong, all right? Worm castings are great because it's almost like an easier version of bat guano. It's like I like to say, in the sense that it's got very similar stuff, but the only reason I would not use Ocean Forest for seedlings is because of that bat guano. It's just, it's not that it's bad. I never said that it's bad. It's just really fucking strong stuff, okay? It's as simple as that, so don't get confused with me not liking bat guano like that one guy said. Now, this is the part where you watch the whole video. I have no problem, I'm gonna repeat it one more time, I have no problem with bat guano. I mean, I use it in my tea, and I don't mind using it during the middle part of veg, like after you transplant, but like for seedlings, Nah, bro, like, I don't recommend that shit. The next soil is one that I feel like I haven't really mentioned too much in my, I might have mentioned it like a long time ago in my videos, but like, it doesn't come to mind. And that's gonna be Lucky Dog. You guys ever see Lucky Dog in your shop? I feel like it's, it's not a very common soil. It comes in, I think it like a 3.8 cubic foot bale. And I don't think it comes in bags. It's just the big bales from what I saw. At least that's what I bought. And I did use it in my 2017 run when I was doing outdoor runs behind my <laughs> behind my folks' watershed wooded property. I still remember, man, trampling through the woods, carrying bags upon bags of soil and like 100 degree weather. Those were not fun days, okay? The, oh I, I still remember the struggle, you know? I mean, like it wasn't fun, I can promise you that. Now, the good thing about Lucky Dog is that it's got some really good microbial elements. It's called grower's blend for a reason. So when you amend it with some organic nutrients with all that microbial stuff in there, oh man, it's like, I guess you could say the perfect storm, except like not in a bad way. I mean, we're talking about some hella explosive growth right there. I feel like Lucky Dogs is not popular though at all. Like nobody, I feel like the last three years, not one person has ever mentioned Lucky Dog in the comments. I've never seen anybody mentioning it in any videos. It's just like nobody gives a fuck about Lucky Dog for some reason, you know? And the best way I can explain Lucky Dog is that it's like, it's like Happy Frog's bail brother. I, I don't know how else to say it, dude. Which brings me to my next soil being Happy Frog. And it's got a lot of microbial elements within the soil, but here's the thing though, it doesn't have anything else in it. So the best way to use Happy Frog is if you're trying to mix it with Ocean Forest to ease up on the Ocean Forest nutrients. So that way you can have the best of both worlds. I mean, that is the best of both worlds. So you, listen up, you got the microbial elements from Happy Frog and you get a lot of the nutrient supply from the Ocean Forest, which is why I told a lot of guys, my Fox Farm Trio, you guys remember the Fox Farm Trio? Not the Fox Farm Trash Newt Trio. I'm talking about the Fox Farm Soil Trio where it's strawberry fields on the bottom half and then I split up the top have between 50 50 you know ocean forest and happy frog that's what i'm talking about don't want to get that confused with like the the fox farm trio nah i ain't about that life bro so if you're trying to do that kind of a mix here's the thing though you got to buy all three bags of soil you got to buy strawberry fields happy frog and ocean forest and if you're strapped for cash obviously you know that's not really a great option it is a good option if you do have the cash you could also use happy frog during the seedling stage that is one soil i will absolutely say you can use it but the thing is you can't just use happy frog you got to add in like 25 percent worm cash i like to add 25 percent worm cash you can do whatever you want i'm just saying for me and i like to think have happy frog as like it's blank soil kind of like pro mix with some microbial elements involved the next soil is one that i was literally just talking about and that is strawberry fields the thing with strawberry fields is there's a lot of unknowns about it you know and even on the packaging at least from when i was looking at the packaging it doesn't really show what's in strawberry fields but it is a flowering based soil so i'm assuming it's got a lot of phosphorus and potassium in there i just know that whenever i would use the strawberry fields i wouldn't get a potassium deficiency like i would with ocean forest which leads me to believe that there's some kind of form of potassium in there i don't know if they use langbionite i don't know if they use wood ash i don't know what they use but there is potassium in that soil. See, that's why I like to have the strawberry fields on the bottom half of my soil mixed. Like if I'm running Fox Farm, because 
Here's the thing though, right? By the time the roots get towards the bottom half, they're already gonna be ready for flowering. And it can get really tricky because I did say after five to six weeks, you have to top dress, which is still the case, but I feel like strawberry fields doesn't get used too much just because it takes a while for the roots to actually get down into the bottom half of your mix. But here's the thing though, it also depends on what size container you're using. So just keep that in mind. The only problem that I have with strawberry fields is the drainage. It's not the, it's not the greatest, okay? So you might wanna add like 20 to 25% perlite in there to just let the water drain a little bit better. See, the thing with Happy Frog and Ocean Forest, and I should have mentioned this earlier on, is I just, I'm talking about drainage right now. Ocean Forest has good drainage. Happy Frog has better drainage than Strawberry Fields, in my opinion, but not as good of drainage as Ocean Forest. So if you're going with Happy Frog, maybe like, I don't know, 10 to 15% perlite should do the trick. Next, we're gonna be talking about is Happy Frog soil conditioner. And as much as I hate to say it, <laughs> I did use this uh, as a straight up soil. Like I know you're supposed to mix it in with like others, you know, with like soil, like it's not supposed to be used as soil, but I use it as soil. Hey, like, listen guys, all right? This was like one of my very first, I don't think it wasn't my first run. My first run was indoors and I used Ocean Forest, but I think it was like maybe my third run. I just, I don't know, I grabbed some Fox Farm soil conditioner, Happy Frog soil conditioner, and it was the only thing that I saw there. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna just try it out. Experimentation is key in horticulture, right? Um, believe it or not though, the soil conditioner's got some good stuff in there. My leaves were always green during veg, and they were just always super happy. Like for, cause I was doing them outside too. I feel like during flowering though, it was okay, sorta. Yeah, it was all right, you know what I mean? Like you might have to add a couple extra stuff in there to make alterations when you're using the Happy Frog soil conditioner. I don't know what they have as far as P and K, you know, your phosphorus and potassium, but I would definitely add some stuff in when you get into flowering. If you're trying, if you, I don't know anybody that's using the uh, Happy Frog soil conditioner as soil itself, but I don't know. Maybe if you want to experiment, kind of play around with it and just, I don't know, you know, summer's coming up. If you got some extra ladies you're trying to run, you know, try it out. I don't really see the soil conditioner in shops. I haven't seen it for many years now. Like, Mostly, I see Light Warrior every once in a while. Ocean Forest, I always see. Happy Frog, I always see. Strawberry Fields, kind of hit or miss, but I usually see it. And that's gonna lead us to our last Fox Farm soil that I've used, which is Light Warrior. I don't know if there's any other soils out there, but if there is, I haven't used it. And if I haven't used it, I can't really make a video on it because I don't really know what to say. Now, Light Warrior, the easiest way I can really say it is it's seedling soil. There's no other way to put it, right? Remember how I was telling you guys about how I used the ProMix 25% worm castings? That is literally the same thing. It's soil that has like nothing in it but worm castings, which is exactly what your seedlings need because you get a, you know, you wanna get a little bit of nitrogen in your seedlings without going overboard. You don't need that much nutrients for seedlings. You know what I mean? Like the roots are still small. You just wanna get just, just a little bit of a kick. See what I like about worm castings and worm castings are, can be used in so many different applications because it's got nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. We can use it in the flowering stage, veg stage, seedling stage. I use it for my mix all the time. If there's no worm castings in my pro mix, there is, we're not doing anything. You know what I'm saying? Worm castings are super important. I absolutely love them. They're absolutely forgive. I keep saying absolutely, but they are totally forgiving. So if you're trying to mix the worm castings with your soil and you just want to get everything right out of the bag, Light Warrior is gonna be where it's at, you know, so that way you don't have to get like pro mix and then get like worm castings. Everything is just, it's all in one bag. So it would really be the same thing as taking pro mix or Happy Frog and adding 25% worm castings. That is literally how you're gonna get Light Warrior. But I do see some stores selling Light Warrior. I don't think they come in a big bag though. I think they come in, uh, like Ocean Forest comes in like what, a 1.5 cubic foot? or 1.5 or 1.8, I think Light Warrior is one of those like really smaller starter seedling kind of, I don't know the dimensions of it, but it comes in a pretty small bag. See, here's the thing though, that's what I really like about horticulture and especially when you start to understand the different soils that are out there and what's in the soils. Like if you go to your local hydroponic shop and you're looking around for something, let's just say you're looking for Happy Frog, just as an example, because we were talking about Happy Frog and they don't have it, right? And you need something to mix with Ocean of Forest. You know, you want to tone it down a little bit. Your Ocean Forest is running a little hot. What are you going to do? There's no happy frog. Guess what? But they got a bag of Pro Mix right there. And that's another option. That, that, see, that's the thing, guys. There's a lot of options out there, a lot of alterations. So, you know what I mean? Don't get too hung up 
on when it comes to like bags or brands or something. Like once you start learning about amendments, what the amendments do, what amendments are in that soil, you start to have a really good idea of kind of what to expect out of that soil. Or like I'll give you another example. Let's just say you're looking for a phosphorus based amendment, but there's no fish bone meal or just any bone meal at all. You can always use rock phosphate or seabird guano. There's phosphorus in both of those, believe it or not. Seabird guano is another one. I feel like a lot of people aren't really familiar with it, but I do use it in my compost tea mix. I do have a compost tea video if you want to check that out. I think I did it like maybe, I don't know, a year, year and a half ago. Just type in 420 scene compost tea and it should be like the first thing, one of the very first things that pops up. That's the thing though, there are multiple amendments out there that are gonna compensate for certain amendments that aren't available or even soils that aren't available. You know, that, there's different kinds of alterations you can make in order to get what you're looking for. So like I said before, all right, don't be focused on brands. Just focus on the different amendments, the different things, why you're using whatever you're using. That's the biggest thing. That's the biggest question you gotta ask yourself, find the answer to those questions. That's why I'm here. Also guys, my apologies for the beginning of the video. I know to some people I might come off a certain way. I don't really mean to at all, but sometimes when people are misinformed or you know assume certain things, I tend to get a bad name as well as other content creators as well. And But make no mistake, I've helped thousands of people around the world and I do enjoy what I do. Also, if there's anything that I might have missed, totally drop it in the comment section below, but try to be positive about it. You know, don't don't give my wife extra work and start removing people from the channel just because you're being dicks, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, positivity is where it's at, you know? Con there's a difference between constructive criticism and hate, obviously. So, uh, you know, keep it positive, make some friends. You know, there's a lot of good people in the comment section. There's a lot of people that know what they're talking about. I don't know everything, you know? There are people out there that know a lot more than me. You know, I'm just going by based on my own experience. I love doing this sort of thing. I've had a passion for horticulture for over the last decade. I mean, it's super addicting. I just love what I do. And even though I don't have like a million ladies or whatnot, you know, I just do a few just for me and my wife, you know, gets the job done. I don't have to have like 10 or 10 ladies or anything like that. So, but anyway, um, I feel like I'm sort of rambling on and on now, but hey, you gotta get that watch time, man. I, I feel like I always say that in a lot of my videos, you know what I mean? So I wanted to make this video because the last time I did a truth about Fox Farm was two years ago, two or three years ago. I think it was actually three years ago. So I figured an updated video would be good. I haven't really made a video about Fox Farm and I know a lot of people like using Fox Farm still, so why not make a video on it? But anyway, I hope everyone enjoyed today's video. And before I close out today's video, I wanna thank everyone on screen who's been supporting us on Patreon. I really appreciate the love and support. To everyone else, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, turn on your post notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. And as always, stay safe, peace.